Oshadi, one of the areas in Lagos State. Welcome to this week's edition of Super Eye. Of course, as always, I'm your host, Adenike Owoye Ajiboye. And now, this week on the program, we want to revisit the topic of which we discussed last week. Yes, we looked out ahead of 2019 election and the violence that has thrilled the award and local government area congresses of the All Progressives Congress APC. And for me, I said it is worrisome if the ruling All Progressives Congress APC cannot put its house under control. One should worry about this because of 2019 election. If a party, a faction of the party against another faction uh, creates such chaos in River State, then you wonder what a 2019 election will be like. So we looked at this issue and we played you a video of uh, the sporadic shooting in the air by police and all sorts that happened. Now the reason was because the Abe faction and that of uh, Rotimi Amechi, uh, well let's say the Abe faction, uh, when the one who went to court to seek uh, injunction stopping the local government um, area congress. But before they could get to court, it was on the lock and key. Now, who did this? Report has it that they are the supporters of Rotimi at Mechi, and that was what we discussed the last week. On that note, I say another warm welcome to this week's edition of Super I. And now, again, last week there were um, congresses also held in different states and I want to tell you that there was uh, a parallel congresses in Imo, uh, Kogi State, Enugu and even in Edo State. Edo also witnessed the uh, violence. Um, Lagos State is not also left out of these old violence. In fact, there was a record of casualty in Lagos, precisely in Agege area of the state where a man was shot. And that is the reason why I am going to revisit this topic today. And now, apart from that, we also want to look at the one-year reschooling, a proposal by the Minister of State for Education. It is calling for uh, advocating that graduates of universities will go through another one year after they've graduated. Now, the reason given by the minister is that uh, some of the graduates from the universities do not meet the standards of industries, the required standards in the labor market. So, we will also look at this on this week's edition of uh, Super R. So, now, uh, let us uh, go straight to the point. I want to hit the nail on the head. The congresses uh, held by the All Progressives Congress, which I told you earlier, was ridden with violence and we had a, a parallel record in some states. I have with me here to talk about this issue or discuss it. Um, a very uh, known uh, barrister, uh, this particular that barrister is also a social commentator, is always there uh, bearing his mind on political happenings in the country. I'm talking about barrister Johnson Ladipo. Thank Good evening, you. sir. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me. All right. It's really beautiful. I know how it is. Saturday, people are always very, very busy. Yes. So many thanks for obliging us. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's hit the nail on the head. The congresses of the All Progressives Congress, APC, we all saw was ridden with violence. We saw a record of parallel, you know, and uh, like that. Uh, what would be your reaction uh, uh, first about this? Well, um, as you said um, whilst introducing the topic, it's um, highly disappointing that the um, ruling party has failed to hold successful 
um, local government congresses around the country. Um, yes, we're used to political violence, but we thought that they were things of the past. Um, it is unfortunate and it's, um, a lot of people have said that that's probably why the APC failed for a few years to hold um, a national convention and hold proper neck meetings after they won, um, they came into government at the center. Um, they failed to do that and it was only when um, we all realized that um, the national elections were around the corner that they started to hold meetings. So yes, it is unfortunate um, because there are many, many um, issues, state by state, um, and different factions. Um, and really, Nigerians do not want this. It's not meant to be a do or die affair. Um, and if a party cannot um, show internal democracy and um, balance out the factions that are in the party, then um, a lot, there's a lot to be desired. All right. Of, of, of course, like you said, yeah, the essence of all of these congresses is for them to be able to achieve internal democracy. And you said that for you, uh, all of this has shown that they have failed. You said, like some Nigerians have said, that, that uh, this might be the reason for which they failed in the in few years which they have governed. How can you expatiate on that? Well, I think um, basically you have to look at how the APC came about in the first place. Um, this is my personal opinion. Um, it is a party of odd bedfellows. Now, where you have a party where people come from different places, different backgrounds, you need a leadership that can hold, that, yes, that can hold the center, as it were. That all members of the party would respect and say, okay, I do not feel cheated. If I go to this person, he or she will say, okay, let these people have a fair share. They've contributed to the party. Let them have positions at the grassroots level, the ward, the local government executive, and the state executive. Now, this didn't happen. It didn't happen. And related to this, although I'm not saying that um, they got involved in the violence in any way, is the fact that you recall that sometime last week, the um, new PDP within the APC wrote a letter to the, um, the chairman of the party, the national yes. chairman, Oyegu, to list how they felt they had been cheated and to give a seven-day ultimatum. Now, these things show that there is mass dissatisfaction within the party. If you had violence, say, in one or two states, well, it would be understandable in the Nigerian context. But where you have um, it's happening in so many states, and where there's no violence, you have parallel congresses, and then you've had, um, for instance, in um, River State, the Abe faction going to stop the local exactly. government. Exactly. Um, congresses in court, then you know that there are many issues there that still have to be treated if the party has to go or wants to go into elections as one united force. Presidential primaries are meant to be in August, just a few months' time. So how do they do that? They have serious problems and they must look for a way to sort out their problems. All right, uh, you said ABC, they have a um, serious problem. Okay, um, I don't know. Well, let me just, I'll come back to you, uh, Barrister. Uh, let me, for the benefit of my viewers for this week's edition, I want you to have a feel of, of what actually happened at the uh, uh, Reavers um, Court Complex, uh, where the, um, the faction of Abe and that of um, uh, um, Rotimi Amechi, of course, the city minister of transportation, how they held or shut down the court premises. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, very uh, uh, clean and you can have a feel of what we're talking about. Go, go, go. 
We are in a democracy. 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 was the drama at River State Court Complex and uh, coming back to my guest now, you have seen uh, what happened there in River State. Uh, with this kind of violence, uh, what does this portend for our democracy? It's despicable conduct. It's very sad. And I believe it has set us back uh, some 10 years. If you have, for one reason or the other, a political grouping, a political caucus, or any individual deciding that I do not want a court of law to sit to um, hear a particular matter. And then you now have um, people, you have um, gunshots either from the police or whoever, whosoever. It shows that we still have a situation whereby the various arms of the government maybe are not showing the respect that they have to show for the other independent arms of government. No matter what, the police should not, like at times we've seen them go to shut down Extreme. the National Assembly. They shouldn't, unless it is said, close the gates by the officers of the National Assembly. In the same way, the police should have nothing or should have had nothing to do with shutting down the courts or preventing people from going unless invited in by the CJ, by the chief judge or the administrative judge of the, of the courts, of the particular court. So you have to, see that we have problems and these are also structural problems and it has to do with the mentality of the people either in the executive I you see I'm being careful I don't just want to lump everything on the president or what have you but we have look at the problem with the inspector general of police and the um, national assembly. assembly it's the same thing so I don't know who who's fooling who it is clear to the entire world it's clear to Nigerians that things are not being done properly and things are uh, there's no respect for the rule of law. No respect for the rule of law. You are a legal practitioner. Yes, I, um, I want to know what is the legal implication of such an action? Because we heard that when the uh, uh, judge was going to deliver the judgment, he was a mid tight security, afraid of his life. What, of what, uh, what is the implication of this? As I said, it's a, it's a sad thing. I mean, the implication, as we all know, is that if a judge doesn't feel that he or she can um, dispense justice um, as he chooses in a free and fair manner, and he or she is afraid of um, his life and well-being, then um, you start to erode justice in the country. You understand? Um, and that is why we're groping in the dark. Some are calling for um, um, state policing. So you, you, you understand, I personally don't believe in state policing. But when you have such a high level of dissatisfaction with, because if a judge, for instance, is going to enforce his judgment or her judgment, they use bailiffs and sheriffs of the court who go along with the police. So when you now have to enforce something, say, against the police for contempt, how does that happen? Okay, um, that's fine. Um, the governor, the sitting governor of River State, uh, Yesom Wike, uh, made some statement uh, yes. um, uh, that day. Uh, and part of what he said is that the APC are uh, trying to kill democracy and uh, are giving room for the military to take over. Do you really think in, the, in this direction? Well. Um, you have to realize that, um, yes, he, he actually made the statement that he wasn't going to mince words and that it was a coup d'etat exactly. against um, his government, an attempted coup d'etat. I wouldn't um, 
go to that extent right. that um, when there's a problem or some people attacked one of the courts, that that means they want to bring the um, government of Rivers down. Of course, that's, we have to um, know that um, he would try to spin it politically. He's a member of the People's oh, Democratic Democrat Party. Party yeah. But yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, it would seem that a sitting minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria gave him the opportunity to make such a statement because of what happened. Um, I, um, I feel that a lot of us are quite um, uncomfortable and more afraid um, regarding 2019 when um, something like this has happened um, within a state like River State and we haven't heard within a few days um, of concrete, concrete steps being taken by the government at the center. Um, it's very troubling and as I said, I, I hope I hope and pray that, well, what um, the governor of River State said that... Um, Will not happen. Uh, yes, uh, but I doubt. Okay. This is not well, the time. I don't think that we'll have... That. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's anyone the should be calling. But personally, do you think that uh, democracy is actually being threatened by what we uh, witnessed? Oh, definitely. Then? Definitely. Democracy was threatened on that day. Democracy is under threat. Democracy is on trial at the moment. We went through the um, 2015 elections and democracy came out on top. And everyone was like, yeah, Nigeria has come of age. But we now have to see in 2019 whether parties will respect the rule of law, whether individuals and parties will respect the results um, from elections, primary elections, and um, the um, general elections. Whichever way, Nigerians all have to come together, all hands must be on deck to realize that we must play our part in ensuring one way or the other, that the rule of law prevails. Look, I want to serve my people. And they say to me, no, we don't want you. Why should it be a problem? End of story. That is if you want to serve your people. So it would be right for me to say that an average politician is about selfish interests. No, it won't be right of you to say that. I won't agree with that. Okay. Well, right then. Okay. unfortunately, it would seem that way. But we hope that we will breed men and women who would come up into politics that and, want and, Nigeria and, and to And give get, a, yes. a good uh, representation. Exactly. All right. And um, finally, I want also uh, really look at you know, the, the violence, really. We heard that uh, um, somebody was uh, shot in a gege and a whole lot of drama at different states uh, as regards states, their congresses. A final word from you looking at ahead of 2019. What is your message to Nigerians? Well, unfortunately, um, the gentleman who died um, was shot. He died. Loss of life is not good in any context, especially when it is needless. In, at a political um, rally, it wasn't a rally, it was um, congresses. But basically, the box, we normally say the box stops at the table of the president, but um, the people of the country now have to decide whether they are going to stick. You see, the problem with Nigerians is we're too sentimental. We must make sure that we are not sentimental. Look at what has happened. Look at the economy. Look at the political um, administration of the country, of your state, and where there are local government or elections of your local governments. Look at it and don't look at whether the person is um, the Ethnic same sex, Sean, same sex as you are, mm -hmm. or whether the person is your tribal brother, or your religious brother or difference. sister. 
Don't look at those things. Look at what the person has done or what of that the, person the coming in. You feel that person can do or the person's antecedents. Look at that. Base that on the future, your future and the future of your children. And say, can this person really, really take decisions that right. will affect my next 10 years? Mm -hmm. And when generation. you look at things in that manner, then that bag of three kilogram, three kilogram mm -hmm. bag of rice. Thank you. Or Ankara, you know, or ground or, or, or even uh, 5,000 or 2,000 naira. You will not it. make you go the wrong way. All right. Um, that will be it. Many thanks, uh, Barista Ladiko Johnson, Thank you for, for making our time Thank on you. Super Art. Well, my viewers, you have heard from Barista Ladiko Johnson what he feels about election in this country. He has said it all. Like we said last week, too, we should be able to make an objective decision as regards those that we want to represent us. And now, I will take a short break. And when we return, we will be looking at the one year schooling uh, proposal by the Minister of State for Education. So, stay with us. This is Oshadi, one of the areas in Lagos State. Speaking at the two-day retreat organized by the National Universities Commission for Governing Councils of Nigerian Federal Universities, Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Onwaka, challenged participants to bridge the gap between Nigerian universities and the industry. While he complained that the Students' Industrial Work Experience Scheme program is no longer working due to what he called inadequate supervision, Professor Onwaka charged like minds to accept the challenge and begin to fashion out solutions. He, however, called for a reschooling project for the Nigerian students to equip them better for the labor market. I earnestly appeal to the University of Government Councils of Social Universities to end the relative decline in the tertiary education system, which is unacceptable for our children, unacceptable for our democracy, and unacceptable for our economy. You, as chairman and members of Government Councils of Federal Universities, have a choice to make. The choice is whether you have the courage and political way to chart a better course for the university system to deliver on their mandates of producing quality graduates who can compete globally or not. And the decision cannot be delayed any longer. I hope no doubt that this retreat will be part of insightful discussions on the modalities we can adopt to conform the challenges of our university head on. On his part, Executive Secretary of NUC, Professor Abubakar Rashid, highlighted the fundamental problems facing the university systems as poor leadership, general underperformance, and inadequate teaching and learning environments. The consequences of poor leadership and bad governance have combined to undermine the capacity of our universities to actualize their core mandates of teaching, research, and community service. Poor leadership and bad governance are cost putting themselves into stumbling blocks and are making it difficult for universities to generate original knowledge, build character, drive innovation and to contribute significantly towards the national development. If the minister's call for one year reschooling is approved, it means students will now spend six years instead of five years with inclusion of NYSC. It remains to be seen whether students and academics will embrace this. 
That is the report where the Minister for State for Education actually called uh, for or proposed uh, that one year of schooling for graduates of universities. I will bring you the one where we feel the pause of uh, individuals at the university uh, in regards to this particular proposal. And now moving on, the phone lines are now open to you to make a contribution. What do you think? Or what is your own opinion about a one year of schooling for university graduates? And I'm wondering, he said, the sewer has been done by students uh, seem not to uh, uh, meet that particular task. And they have found that, that a lot of individuals or graduates, once they're out of school, they cannot really meet the required uh, standards at uh, the, uh, the industries, uh, basically the labor market. So this is why we brought this to you. Let us hear from you, because if we don't talk, it means that our students will not have to use our seven years or thereabout in school. And I'm wondering, of what essence is our universities? If after four years or five years with the NYSC, a graduate is unable to meet the requirements needed at the labor market, now, part of the reason he also gave is that if um, students, uh, the, the doctors have to undergo their uh, one year, uh, uh, what's it called now? The one year training they go for, and uh, that of um, lawyers that also undergo another one year before they call to the bar. He said, how be it that all the um, areas or disciplines cannot also do the same? So, is this what you also feel? Do we uh, give the uh, Minister for State for Education the go ahead for his proposal to be, you know, accepted? Because if this proposal is actually passed, oh my, parents will have to pay through their nose because I'm very certain that the expenses is not going to be uh, 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 carried by the federal government or government at different levels. It's still going to be the burden on parents and guardians. So uh, let us talk now and uh, see or uh, feel your pearls as regards this particular issue. Uh, then again, it bothers me also that just 7% has been allocated to education. And I begin to wonder if they say that education is the bedrock of any nation. A bedrock of any nation, it means that no nation can actually develop, really develop if people are not educated. So for people to be educated, how would you then say just 7% should be allocated? Uh, for education. So I want to hear from you. Now they also say that education is the best legacy. The best legacy because it can be handed down or passed down from a one period of time to another, from one ancestor to a predecessor. Now legacy will, could be some amount of money, property or a form of an inheritance. Now, Before now there have been numerous debates and arguments on the best legacy children can inherit from their parents and society at large. And I tell you what, it, eventually it was proven that it was proven that education is still the best legacy a parents can give to their um, children. So it is the best it is the best legacy in terms of a family institution, a legal, medical, even political institution. So if we want every aspect of our, our nation to function well and produce results, then it has become imperative for our education, uh, for in, uh, more investment to go into education. So uh, right about now, still on this one year of schooling, I would want to take a report on the one year schooling call by the uh, Minister for State for Education for you to hear what some students, parents, and guardians have to say uh, about this. One year schooling has been greeted with mixed reactions.
The Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Awuka, had presented the proposal at the retreat for governing councils of Nigerian federal universities. Defending his call, the minister said university graduates are not good enough to be employed by industries, saying the time is ripe to train students to meet the required standards of industries. Filling the polls of students on this call, they express divergent views. While some say it is a welcome development, others frowned at it. For parents and guardians, the idea of reschooling is uncalled for. For others, it is another waste of time. I like like that. There are some courses that are very technical, okay? Courses like um, electrical engineering, geophysics. Now, graduates from those courses, it's true that some of them are not actually relevant, they are not actually ready to go out to the industry. But that doesn't mean you cannot generalize it. So in my opinion, I don't think that is generalized. You can't just make that one year mandatory for all because there are like percentages of students that are, that are actually ready for the industry. So I disagree with that. I don't think that's necessary. After going through four or five years in school, you now ask them to go do another extra year. That's very unreasonable considering the fact that to go to school is not, you know, bacon of roses and all that so it's not easy so i don't think it's um, a good idea they should think of all the things and other ways but not for them to go back to school for a whole year what the minister of state or the minister of education could be saying will be depending on students that may not have such opportunities as we speak my daughter can handle the job of a geologist to an extent just as she's coming out of school. I'm amazed that there are some things she got to understand, to go through as a CUA student in Shlombeje, which I'm yet to fully understand. The softwares that are being used worldwide, she can use them right now. So I would be surprised if such a student from such a wonderful university like Unilag were groomed by qualified lecturers that should be out there to, to, to start working and any some money or going for postgraduate will be thinking of reschooling. It's uncalled for. For University of Lagos, we are actually doing our best to make sure that our uh, students meet up to standard. You understand? But I don't want to make a comment about his, uh, uh, his uh, decision or what they are actually looking at or proposing. They were however quick to suggest the best approach to helping students meet the demands of the labor markets. They should focus on improving the education for people while they are in undergraduate level instead of mandating this one. If you do a good job educating people within five years, four years, they will get enough. You don't need to add an extra one here to them. The university should be restructured such a way that while they are in school, they are being trained to appreciate what is outside and prepared for that, I mean, application of knowledge. I remember when I was in school, since year one I was in school, I made up my mind I was not going to work for anybody. And so each time I'm getting a call, somebody, a lecturer is teaching me, I begin to see the application and the implication of that course. I mean, the effect, what can I do? What can I make of that course after I graduate? And what I did was that I just applied myself to courses that are relevant to what I will do outside. And that's where I spend my, a lot of energy. They have to put resources in the universities. I went to school in America, so I know that, you know, you have to do things, you know, do things well. But the government had to strengthen the resources in the universities so that, uh, you know, graduates can uh, meet the standards, you know, and be employed is not just going to school. After school, then they are there loafing around doing nothing. Considering the way the economy is, the, 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 the country is, is in a chaos. The economy is in a chaos. A lot of people are not making money. So how do you expect them to pay one year extra to go back to school? That's unreasonable as far as I'm concerned. The children should be well groomed so that on leaving school, even without a job, they, my daughter can go into consultancy now and be able to create an impact because of the training she has received in five years 
of her career in this university. Worthy of note is that the minister, in his submission, while defending his proposal, pointed out that if law students attend law school for one year before going for the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, with the medical students doing the same in their one year housemanship before practicing professionally, then it feels it is necessary for other discipline to follow suit. It remains to be seen if this proposal will see the light of the day. All the time will tell. All right, that is the report in which we went to fill the polls of our students, our parents, our graduates, and you've heard what they have said. Why some said it is totally unacceptable, and others also found that it. And some also said that um, when you look at other uh, technical areas like engineering and what have you, do you still say that people in this um, a particular uh, discipline should also undergo another one year after school. What do you think? The number to call is now being uh, scrolled on the screen. So call me now and let us show your post also. What you think? Do you really think this is the way forward? Or what do you also suggest should be the way forward? Like a particular parent said there that uh, what should be done is for the federal government to uh, fund education more, invest more. Now, we also have to look at it from another area, and that is for universities that do not meet the standards. Should it not be that a federal government would not concentrate on uh, checking schools who are not really doing what they're expected to do, and then maybe you withdraw their licenses because really there are so many higher institutions today uh, that even eventually the uh, graduates that it churn out, my dear, I can tell you it is nothing to write home about. So uh, most likely this is the reason for which is also calling for this. But then for universities who put in their best to ensure that their graduates uh, meet the standard, do you to say students who go to that school, to such schools, that I had to pay through their noses before coming out of school, then you now say go through another one year? I don't know. I'm just thinking aloud. So uh, call me now and let us uh, feel your pulse also on this particular uh, topic because really, if Nigerians are all talking, it means that that proposal is likely to see the uh, light of the day. No, so in order for that proposal not to be um, um, approved, then we have to speak out. Our parents really ready for that cost, uh, given the fact that um, the economy of Nigeria at the moment is not very, it's not palatable really. It's, it's unfriendly, you know, having to pay so much at private universities. Well, I think the private universities will actually be exempted. It's just going to be federal universities and state uh, universities. If after four years, a student cannot uh, beat their chest to be able to meet the labor market uh, requirements, then you begin to ask yourself, is it really worth it then going into the uh, university in the first place? Because this is what education is supposed to do, to reshape in you, to impart knowledge in you, uh, for you to be useful in the society and you know, innovate. Uh, come up with new ideas that will end up making the nation uh, uh, um, um, uh, that you know, nation that we have always uh, dreamt to uh, uh, be. So uh, these are the issues really and um, it also beats my imagination also uh, knowing that just 7% uh, is being allocated for education. So uh, what do you think? Uh, let's go now because really I don't really have time on my side, really, I need Nigerians to really talk for this very proposal to be uh, approved because uh, personally I feel it is uncalled for too. But uh, that is my own personal opinion as regards that because I know what it is for students uh, uh, being in university for four years, feeding, uh, um, having to buy handouts, having to buy you know, our textbooks and all of that. You pay for your rooms and a whole lot of, of, of okay, Hello, this is Esther. Hello, Esther from Ojota. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Please, I would like to talk to the issues of that. Yeah, please, right on. The, 
The extra one year that he asked, that the minister is asking for. Yeah. To what effect the leaving of the student? Well, he is also saying that he's going to help impart knowledge. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? I can't hear you clearly. Okay. What about this way? Can you hear me clearly? Bye. Okay. I'm listening. Okay, what the minister is saying that uh, many graduates eventually cannot meet the standards uh, required of industries, companies, uh, you know, in the labor market. So they found out that a lot of students when they graduate and they are employed, they cannot do what is expected of them. You know, they think uh, most organizations will have to what train them. I have to say. Okay. Yes, let's have your Can suggestion. You, please. What I have to say is that there is no effect of this program or this uh, one extra one year on the students. Okay. If the government are just meant to be exploiting people, why are they exploiting an inconvenience uh, parents or guidance? They, they, they should put more pressure on the lecturers, put more pressure on those that will give better enablement to the students instead of saying they should they, they are meant to be and now asking for more money. When parents are going out of their way, most of them struggle to pay for the students uh, school fees and whatever whatever uh, the, that the school is demand for. And the government is still asking for extra one year. So for you it's totally That's uncalled for bad. That's too bad. This country, we are not helping ourselves. Some things we can't get to it. To take, to take, to take, to take. Okay, Esther, but what what would be your instance, suggestion? They are not giving out. Hello, Esther. The, the Senate out. They are collecting. They are collecting. They are not collecting. The local people on the ground. They are not making anything. Okay, Esther, um, I, I get your point. But what is your suggestion on the way out? If graduates after four years cannot meet the required standards of industries, what do you think should be the direction in which the uh, minister should be looking? To me, I think the minister should reduce their own payments so that they will pump the money into the education sector, into the family sector, into the sector that needs more enablement. Look at the uh, medical people now. They are on strike for so many for some days now or months, and still nothing is being done. And the same people are speaking, they are having to every week they collect money, and people are here dying every day. What for? All right, many thanks, Esther, for your contribution. Noted. Okay, you heard Esther there. Um, it's really annoying. I know how it can be, especially for a new graduate. And when you look at the level of unemployment in the country, and to say that a minister is calling for another one year, you've heard her. She has bad in mind. Uh, for her, it is a form of exploitation, and that government is continuing to take and take and take. Let them give into the into education. She has called for uh, more funding for education, and she also said. Um, inconvenience really because it's it's not a joke you know it's not a joke especially for serious uh, universities serious institutions been there you have to read all through the night mosquitoes will bite you and all of that and then you see for four years students are still unable to meet requirements then why not look at an alternative of ensuring that while they're in school for four years there should be a particular course that we take care of industry requirements. I mean, that is my own suggestion. Esther suggested for more funding. We cannot be talking about paucity of um, funds at this particular stage. Uh, the seven percent being allocated for education is just is 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 um, um, it's annoying, really, because if education is said to be the bedrock of any nation, and for any nation to grow. Education is one area that you should really fund. So what is the problem? I also feel this a very a proposal should not uh, be allowed to see the light of the day. But 
I'm still waiting to get other people's of views as regards uh, this uh, very uh, call of the Minister of State uh, for Education. Do you really think that it is a welcome development? You've heard all the people that we uh, spoke to in that report, and none of them really um, um, a kind of um, support uh, this particular call. And I don't know if there's somebody who shares uh, a contrary opinion to all that has been said, or to all that have been said, rather, let us hear from you. If you're also towing the occasion uh, behind the minister who feels that it is about another one year, and even when we look at him, um, in politics, we know what is happening there. And in education, you come out, what is even the salary of an average graduate? After spending so much in education, because we all know that, yes, education is the best legacy, but then parents uh, spend hello. so much. Okay, hello, I have Biodu. Hello, Biodu, you're welcome to Super Eye. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma. let me have your contribution. Yes, I want to make a contribution to the topic on ground. I don't expect the Nigerian government to be imposing what is not necessary on us. Okay. For goodness sake, this country, I don't know where we are heading to. Why will someone just wake up one morning and come after going um, to school for several years? Someone will just sit one way in his, in his comfortable zone in his house, coming up with an idea of we spending a try year in school. After what? I don't know. Now you're saying that the, the, the 70% are only allocated to education in Nigeria. So what else do they expect all? Is they create Nigeria? We are not making, we are not, we are not going forward in Nigeria at all. The, all they know about is just their pockets and it's not supposed to be so. They are cheating the youth and I don't believe that the future is even starting for the, the, the people coming up. All right. I don't believe we have any future yet. All right. Many thanks, uh, Abiodun. I appreciate your contribution. Okay, you've heard another call, Abiodun, there. She's a bit emotional, and I know what it is like or what it feels like. I'm, I'm not even expecting less from my callers today because I would expect that people will be emotional, especially when you know that they are graduates at home for four years, even six years and beyond, and they are yet to be employed by any organization. Now, these industries even call it saying that they are not of the graduates do not meet their requirement. I mean, where do you put the place of training? I bring them in and you can also train them because education is not really just about a particular um, 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 discipline. Your ability to write, um, communicate effectively. Okay, I have Olua Femi. You're welcome to Super Eye. Let me have your contribution. Hello. Yes, Olua Femi, right on. Hello. Right on, Olua Femi, you're here. Okay, can, can you hear me? Oh, loud and clear. Okay, okay, yeah. I also want to speak according to the to the topic. Um, hello. Please ride on, ride on. I'm on ease. Okay, okay. So, um, um, as per the topic, ma, I think what the government needs to do is um actually to improve the practical in the school. Because I, being a student, have not really been going through practical processing at all. So there should be enough practical, not just every time theory in the school. Are okay. You, are you understanding me? And yes, I am. Whereby, when they, when they finish from school, then you know they are going to they are going outside to face some practical. So practical should be involved in the in the school um, lecturing. Right. So that's okay. just my contribution. All right, Olua Femi, Thank many you. thanks for calling. Or do you still have another suggestion? Okay, um, you've heard that's another call now. Also say that it is totally uncalled for. And uh, part of his own suggestion is the need for uh, universities to introduce practical. Now, you also have to know that we have the um, polytechnic. While Polytechnic, you know, um, concentrates on practical, universities concentrate more on a th theory. Now, based on what the minister is calling for, Femi has suggested 
that it will be right that practical is also introduced at uh, universities. So I think this, uh, this actually makes sense, really, that for you to subject uh, students who have undergo another four years to now go through another one year of schooling, which I know is not going to be free, the parents are still going to be responsible for a such a, a, a burden. So it is a burden, really. It is a burden. So a clarion call on the Minister of State for Education to have a rethink. Okay, I have Buki. Hello, Buki. You're welcome to Super Hello. Eye. Yes, Buki, let's have a contribution. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Super Eye. I'm sorry, I just want to contribute. I don't really like this. Fine, I'm a graduate and I'm working. But I'm, I'm really foaming. The, the minister is so wrong to even think about this proposal at all. I know what people go through before they can even graduate. Not, a, not talk of going for NYSC and the next thing is preschool, preschool whatever. It's, it's, it should not even happen because this country fucks up in the, in the first place. Not talk of, now my son, did you do something? In, I don't even know if I'm really boiling. We should just cut it off. He should not even try it. We're right. in Nigeria. Where are we going? Look at killings everywhere. I'm talking about the killings. I'm sorry to say, it's so annoying. You're right. He should not even think about it. He should not, please. All right. All right. Okay, fine. Why, why not they just train them while in school? Why not train them while in school? People pass, I do a lot of, I conduct a lot of interviews. Most of them are really, really good. But the thing is, is everything is all about connection. It's so annoying. Right, I mean, Buki. They should not even think about things. All right, Buki, many thanks uh, for your contribution. I can understand, you know, like I said earlier, I will be expecting or I'm expecting of my callers being emotional about this particular call. And the reason is not far-fetched, really. If you've been to a university, you would know what we are talking about. And when I heard it too, I feel that it is totally uncalled for, really. And from what you've heard from the few callers that have been able to make it through to Super Eye today, everybody seemed to frown at eight. So, a clarion call on the minister to have a rethink on this proposal, uh, such that this proposal does not see the light of the day. Four years, uh, the university is not a joke, really. Like somebody said, would somebody sit in, the co in its uh, comfort zone and just come up with some kind of um, proposal that it, it, it can, people would not reckon with? Because from what we've heard now, a lot of people are not reckoning with this particular proposal. So uh, they've called for uh, practicals to be introduced at the universities. And I think uh, this should be the way to go. Okay, uh, okay, you, you, you are a lucky caller. Let me have your uh, contribution. Please ride on. Are you still there? Okay, time is not on my side. I'm, I'm interested in taking another call up before I round up on this uh, uh, program. Uh, but from what people have um, been saying, it is um, evident, it is clear that it is not the way to go, really. When you look at the economic situation in the country and the fact that politicians are you know, um, they're seeing the money. And when you even look at the salaries at universities, you would know, I mean, the salaries are, are being um, given by industries, even private government, name it whichever way, it is nothing to write home about. So why are we calling for another one year? So whatever it is, the requirements that uh, uh, um, students are not meeting, then let it be introduced at the uh, forwards of the university, uh, train them so that when they come out, they will be able to meet the requirement of the global market. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my viewers, and that is where I'm going to draw the curtain on this week's edition of Super Eye. Uh, many thanks for being in company. Remember to join me same time uh, next week. Uh, let's do this again. I am Adenike Owoye Ajiboye. It's a bye for now. Oshadi, one of the areas in Lagos states.